Okay, so what we were looking at before, I'm going to go back out to the main menu here. What we were looking at before were membership plans and how to set these up. And I apologize if, as, I apologize if I'm repeating myself. I'm not sure where I got cut off before. Um, as I said before, these are all membership plans that members can sign up for when they join. Each member is restricted to only one membership type. They can only pick one of these when they sign up. So these will all be unique to people. Uh, but most people can be in the same category. So you can have multiple sponsors if you want. But somebody cannot be a Platinum sponsor and a PTA member. That's the only difference there. Now we're going to add a new plan and go through all the things you can do to set those up. The first thing is a description. This is what you want to call it. So we're going to say this is going to be Bill's member plan. Uh, the details are just whatever you want to call it here. Or I'm sorry, whatever uh, details you want to add on to it, the description for it. So we're just going to say this is Bill's plan. Uh, the term, as I was saying before, you can make this um, any of these that you want. It can either, and this is how often they will have to pay dues. So either annual, once per year, uh, semi-annual, every six months, quarterly, or monthly. Uh, so that's just going to be determined when they can or when they have to renew their membership. The dues, you set these right here. So if we were to say $50 here, if you have it set to annual, it would charge them $50 annually. If you had it set to semi-annual, it would be $50 every, two, or every six months, you know, and so on from there. You can also set up tier dues, which are very useful for people who have uh, or have companies as members. What you can do here is you can actually adjust the dues based on the amount of employees that they have. So I'm going to set this up so that we can see this in a minute and how to set that up. You can set up a one-time registration fee. This will be a fee that the person has to pay um, immediately when they register, but as soon as uh, they go to renew their membership, they will not have to pay this again. This is a one-time thing. Uh, you can also set something as a trial membership. What the trial membership does is it will look at their join date, so whatever day that they decide to join, and it will limit it to however many days you have in here. So if we set this up as a trial membership and put 30 days, after 30 days after they join, it's automatically going to put them back into a pending status, and they're not going to be able to sign in anymore. So they'll either have to sign up for a full membership, um, or they'll have to drop their membership, one of the two. Uh, the default choice, this just means that if you select it here, um, whatever plan you have this selected for will come up as a default choice. will already be pre-checked for them when they go to register. You can also make this a restricted choice. By default, it's not restricted, which means that they can pick this plan when they sign up. But you have other options. You can make it restricted so that it's not visible or available at sign up. Basically, what that means is that you can make uh, packages like this that are going to be comped. Like, uh, you know, people have lifetime members that they don't want to have to pay anything, but they want to have them in the member database and have all that info. Uh, so you can make this restricted, and then you could assign people to that. You could switch their membership type over. Um, or you can make something display only. Um, it's displayed at sign up, but they can't select it. Um, but when they do renew their membership, you have the option to let them pick, uh, pick ones like this. So this could be, you know, uh, you know a two-year or one-year member or something like that um, that, you, that you want them to sign up for. Um, after they register. This won't be an initial registration, but this will be year down the road they will come to that. You can make something a non-renewal plan, which means that that plan won't automatically renew. Uh, it will basically kill their membership, and then they'll have to rejoin a with a new membership plan. Uh, some people like to have that, which is why, why we have this here, but it's not used a whole lot. Um, and we also have the ability to make a multi-year term. So if you want to make something like uh, two years or three years instead of annual, you can set that in here. So you would set it to annual and then set like two years. Uh, which means that this would be a two year annual two year membership. So every two years they would have to pay the fifty dollars. And then finally, I'll check that. Finally, we have the discount at renewal. So we could make the dues fifty dollars here for when they sign up, but we could give them you know a ten dollar discount when they renew, which means that their dues for the next year would only be forty dollars. So that's a good way to you know give your members a little bit of extra benefit there. Now we're going to continue, and since I picked tier dues, we're going to get options for that now. So right now I have no tiers at all for this one, but I can start adding them from right from here. So we'll say add new tier. So I'm going to say from 1 to 25 employees, they have to pay $20. So we'll set that up here. The next one I'm going to add, and we're going to say from 26 to 50, and we'll say that they have to pay the full $50. Okay, and you can set up as many of these as you want, and in their member profile, they have to tell you how many employees they have, so that's what it's going to look at for that, and we'll go over that when we get into the member database here in a few minutes, how all these things tie together. So if we say continue past here, we've got our membership plan set up. You can see right here it's at the bottom. It's set to display only, which I'm going to turn off here. We're going to say not restricted, and then we get my tiers again. Okay, 
So we've got my member plan here. We've even got tiers down here. So 1 to 25 employees would pay $20. 26 to 50 would pay $50. And that will work um, as long as um, even when people update their employees. So if they only have, you know, 24 employees right now, but in six months that bumps them up to 30-some, it's going to bump them up into that higher tier for their next invoice. Uh, you can also, this is the, the way that they will display on the page in this order. You can move stuff up and down that way. You can click the Edit Pencil to change any of them, or you can hit the X to delete any of these. All right, so that is the member plans right there. Uh, we're going to move on now into the member categories. That's another part we can set up here. And like I said before, if you have any questions about this, please just type them into the chat window, and I will answer them after the session. Um, also, for anyone who just rejoined, I apologize. We had an interruption in our Internet, which kicked everyone off. Um, I'm still recording the session, though, so anything that you missed, I'll send out an email later on, later on and you'll be able to see that part of the video. All right, so moving on, uh, we're still up in this first box here. We just looked at uh, the member plans. Now we're going to look at member categories here, and these are really easy. I just want you guys to be aware of uh, how easy they are to change. Now if we click on there, um, we have all these categories right here. Now if you don't have anything set up, nothing's going to show up on this page at all. You'll just have the option to add new category. Uh, what these are basically, these are different things that people can specify in their member profile. Uh, we have up to five different categories that they, can, um, that they can pick, and these are just things that add additional info in. So if we just want to add a new category here, I'm just going to call it a uh, bills category, and we're going to save it. That's all it is here. It's just text, basically, and you can see my category right down here. Um, you can also have the ability to rename. In the, in the uh, member database, it's going to show up as categories, but you can call them something else if you want to. You can, you know, um, attributes or whatever you want to call them. There's easy ways to change that. Um, so that's just easy to add a new category. Now I'd like to look at the member database, so we'll see how some of these fit together and then how the database works itself. Okay, the member database is the very first one right here. So if we click on that one, it's going to show us uh, just the, the overview of the database and what we've got here. Now, by default, it's showing you all of your full members. This does not include things like staff members or prospects or list-only members or anything like that. Um, if you want to look at those ones, you can click the drop-down, and we can say all record types. And that's going to pull up everybody. Any, t any member plan that we've got, it's going to pull that up, whether it's list-only or not. Um, it's going to pull that up that way. You can also look at any of these ones individually. Now, these are all uh, different member plans right here. The ones that have the asterisk next to them means that they're a full member plan. So these are, these are actual member plans right in here. The ones that do not have the asterisk, these are uh, prospect or list only ones. So we've got leads, list only, past members, prospects, representative senators, all that kind of stuff. So those aren't going to uh, pull with your normal members unless you want them to. Okay, so we're going to switch this back to view all members to make it easier. There we go. Uh, we've also got the status over here. By default, it's set to active. What that means is that active members are people who have current permissions and can log into your website. Uh, pending members, um, you get these sometimes if you have it set up for new members. You can put them into a pending status so that their member database or their member profile gets created. Uh, they can pay. You can look at all their stuff, uh, but they can't log in until somebody switches them from pending to active. Um, so that kind of lets you get a handle on who's joining your organization and if you want to let them join or not. And then denied and dropped are both dropped from the database. Uh, denied just means that you've basically turned off all their permissions. Dropped means that you've deleted them completely. Um, but you can switch these either to look at status of all, so we can just see everybody regardless of status, or we can switch over to view any of these ones individually. All right. You'll also notice one thing here. Some of these are in red. Uh, the reason that these are in red is that when you make a change to someone's member profile, um, there are scripts that run, um, I believe they run once per hour, that will rebuild an email list for you. So if you have uh, you know, current lists of members or things like that, uh, the red just means that this has not currently been um, put into the new list yet. Now, once you make a change, you have the ability where you can immediately trigger the bash job, which, which uh, renders that, um, or you can just wait an hour or so, and it will turn all these from red into regular and put them into the email list. So that's all that the red text means right there. All right, some other things up here that you might be interested in that you can do here. You can show and hide columns here. So right now these ones are being displayed, but you can look at the state and the city, and you can see they add as long as I keep adding them here. So you can look at those right here. You can copy everything to the clipboard if you want. You can export everything to either a CSV or an Excel file. Now one thing I like to point out about that, it's only going to export what you've got onto the screen. Um, so right now we're only showing 50 entries. Now if we're showing all entries here, take a minute to load, and then I export, then it will show me every, then it will export everything for me. Otherwise, it's only going to export what I've got currently showing. So just be aware of that. 
Uh, there's an Add New Member button right here, which we're going to use in a minute just to show how to add somebody new. And you can also search for somebody. So if I just wanted to look for myself in this database, type my name and say go, and I don't have anything in here. There we go. So I do have one. I have a prospect account that was denied, and I do have a list-only account that was turned off at some point. So that's just a way you can look for stuff like that in the database. So we're going to clear that. Okay. So now we're going to look at adding a new member, and so we're going to see how these things tie in a little bit more. So we'll say add new member right here. And you'll see here we get a whole lot of options. I'm going to go, to, go over these um, one at a time so we can see what exactly these mean here. Um, but basically, this whole top section right here, uh, up down basically to about here, is all just basic contact info for the person. So we've got you know their business name, you've got profile info, you can put your website, uh, you've got all their name information, and their address and alternate address right here. Um, if, you if you're using the alternate address too, you, you, they can actually specify that they want the alt address alternate address for mailings. So um, if you send them any hard copies of anything, you can use that. Uh, you've got some extra billing email and phones and stuff down here. And then here are the categories that I was showing before. Now, like I said, we can rename the categories to whatever you want. Um, there's an easy option to change that. Um, but you'll see here now, um, we can pull up bills category, which I pulled right in here. So as long as you make these, you can select as many of these as you want, up to five in their member profile. And then you're able to do reporting on these later. So um, one of the things we're going to look at later in the, the session is how to use the custom reporting module. And I'll show you how easy it is to be able to look at people who have bills category specified right here. So if you want to pull up everybody who has a specific category set, it's very, very easy to do. Now below that, we've got the email field. Uh, this is a very important field because this is where any communication that you, that you uh, use is going to look for this field in the member uh, profile. So that includes any broadcast messages, uh, newsletters, billing, um, anything like that is going to show up right there. I think I'm cutting in and out here. Is, uh, am I still getting good audio from people? I'm going to unmute everybody for a second. Is there, can everybody still hear me? Yeah. Hmm. Good. All right, I apologize for that, everyone. Um, it is recording well, uh, so I'll keep doing the session and we'll at least have a, a good recording of it to look at. Our internet's being a little flaky today, so I really apologize for that. Um, so I'm just going to keep going here. If you can't hear it and it's, it's too bad for you, you can uh, exit the session. I'll send you the, the link for the YouTube video later. I apologize again. All right. Um, so we were looking at the email up here. Like I said, this is important because that's going to, um, all the communication that you do here um, is going to rely on that field. The username right down here that is going to um, be what they log in with. As long as you enter a username for them, so we'll just do test user 101 or 10. Um, what that's going to do, as long as you set a username for them and you save it, it's going to create a password for them automatically. So you're not going to have to worry about creating a password for them. Now down here we've got their status. If they were in pending before, oops, if they were in pending before, you can switch them over to active, or this is a good way you can um, put somebody in pending or you can deny them from right here. Now, the member type is right below that. That's what we looked at setting before. So now I'm able to select my member type that I set up here. Somewhere here, there we go. There's Bill's member plan. And then right down here is the employee count. So this is where you would enter that in. So we'll put, you know, 24 right in there. Now it's going to automatically calculate my dues based on the tier that I chose for this one. If you're not using tiering, you don't need to worry about this at all. Um, but if you are using tiering, that's how it's set up. Membership add-ons. I'll go on to uh, how to set these up in just a moment. These are set up in the billing system. But these are things that people can tack on to their membership if they want to, and it will add it to their billing. All right. Uh, now, down below that, we've got uh, their member security level. There's only two different kinds of security levels. There's regular member and there's administrative. Uh, but we do have the ability to give people partial admin permissions, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, but pretty much, unless you want somebody to have full access to your, your MMS and to your system, you should make them a member. That way they won't, they'll only have access to what you want them to. Uh, Cross-referencing. What the MMS allows you to do is cross-reference one member beneath another one. So um, this is useful in cases of like family memberships. There will be like a primary family member and then the other family members will be cross-referenced beneath them. Or for um, organizational memberships. So the organization will be the member and then all of the employees will be cross-referenced beneath that person. Now, this part right here, um, if you set this one, this will put this member beneath another member. So this, will, this is how you make somebody um, a secondary member to someone else. So you'll click on change, and then you'll click who you want them to be um, a member beneath. Now, this works the opposite way, too. 
Um, skipping down to the bottom here, we've got cross-reference members. Click to add a cross-reference uh, cross reference to this member. This is, allows you to make somebody a top-level person. So I could click here, and then I would be able to um, either select or add a new member this way. Um, the easiest way that was to find people who are going to be the sub-members and then uh, uh, set it this way. This is by far the easiest way to do it. Now, down below that, we've got their join date. And one thing I'd like to point out as we go through some of these more advanced ones, you'll see that some of these have an asterisk next to them and some of them do not. What asterisk means is that um, this is an admin-only field, so only admins are able to change this for people. So a person cannot come in here and change their member security level. They can't change their membership type until they renew. They can't change their status. Um, but they can change other things like down here. So they can exclude themselves from the member list. They can hide their URL. They can include their city and state in the Google Map results. These are just additional options that members have that they can do. Um, now we've got these lists right down here, prospect, newsletter, email, and board list. And you'll see they have in parentheses prospects at, newsletters at, these are different email lists, and I've sort of talking about those before, the ones that rebuild themselves periodically. Um, these are useful in the broadcast messaging system. You're able to target just people on these lists. So this is a great way for people to opt themselves in and out of receiving communications from your organization. So if they don't want to receive anything um, from the newsletter one, they can um, uncheck that one, and they won't be included in any of those as long as you're using the, uh, the lists. So I encourage you, if you're using, if you're telling people to sign up um, through these ones, I encourage you to send out broadcast emails that way. Um, and that way that people who are unsubscribed will be correctly unsubscribed from what you're doing. Now, we do have the additional option where we can suppress them from broadcast emails, and they're allowed to do this themselves if you set up the option for it. Um, if they have this box checked, they will not receive any broadcast emails that you send at all except for billing emails. That's the only thing that they'll receive. So they'll still receive their renewal invoice and things like that, and if they're past due, but they won't receive any normal broadcast emails that you send out other than that. Now, down below here, um, these ones here are all custom fields that we've set up just for this organization. Um, we can set up all sorts of different fields for your organization, whether they be text fields like this, uh, drop downs, or big uh, check boxes or big multi lines. We can do that as well. Um, if you ever need to know um, how to set any of those up or you want us to set up any of those up for you, just let us know. We're happy to do it. Uh, these are also, I should um, also say, these are all searchable and you're able to report on these as well. And we'll get into that in a little while. Projects and committee shows up beneath that. Um, if you have any public projects and committees that you set up, uh, they will show up as joinable for the member right here. Any ones that you make um, invitation only, they're not going to show up like this for the member, but they will show up on their profile um, if they're part of it. So just from right here, I could subscribe this person to all these different projects um, very easily just by clicking the boxes. Uh, finally, we have a notes field down here. This is an admin only field. So if you'd like to um, you know, put anything about your members that you want other admins to see or that you don't want the member to see, um, you can put that right in here. Now, down below that, all these checkboxes right here, these are the partial admin permissions that I was talking about. Um, what you would do to, to use these is you would make somebody, make sure that their member security level is set to member, not admin. Because if they're set to admin, they have rights to everything. If they're set to member, they have rights to nothing, except for the, just the regular member's features. Now, if they're set to member and you check any of these boxes, it will give them admin permissions to just that module. So, for example, if I click this box, it would give this person, they would be a normal member in all respects, except that they could manage the calendar like an admin. They could add events, they could delete events, they could change things, um, all sorts of stuff that way. And you can give people multiple permissions. So say I had somebody in my organization that I didn't want to make them a full admin, I didn't want them to do everything, but it'd be great if they could manage you know, the calendar and the message boards and my mobile app for me. I would check all these, then they could manage those just like an admin, but they can't access anything else. So they wouldn't be able to get into the billing, they couldn't get into the member database, um, none of that kind of stuff. So this is just a great way to be able to parse work out in your organization, be able to delegate things to people and give them permissions to do so. All right. So we had down here, I already talked about the cross-referencing. Um, additional in member info pages. Um, if we have any of these set up for you, these are kind of specialized things we have to set up. Um, this is set up for this organization, but not for um, all of them. So if you need to set stuff up like that, um, just let us know. Member photos, they can click here to upload a photo for their profile. Um, we also have the option where we can turn on member photo galleries. So if you want to give them the option where they can um, upload their own photo albums that are personal to them, you can do that right here. And then we also have an option where we can turn on member documents. So if you want them to be able to upload documents, we can turn that on as well. And they would have their own personal document storage on here. Okay, so that's pretty much the member database. Um, again, if you have any questions in that, please feel free um, to type in the chat window or send me an email or even submit a ticket um, later if you think of something later on. All right, so we're going to move on a little bit. 
we're going to take a brief look at uh, the, the member billing system. I'm not going to get too in-depth into it. Um, there is a video posted on our YouTube channel, though, that's a full in-depth billing training. So if you have any questions, I suggest that you check that one out. Um, but I'm going to show just a couple things in here right now that are useful for the membership side. All right, so the billing system is right here next to the database. We'll go into here, and basically um, what I want to show right here is we're going to look at one member's transactions right now. So you can see an individual view. And we're just going to pull up just a random person here. Okay. This is the view for just a single person. And you're able, actually, by clicking here in the member database, you can go directly back to this person's. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not what I wanted to do. You can go to this member's info. And that will take you back to this person's member database entry. And then, similarly, this member's billing info will take you to this billing page here. So that's how you can bounce back and forth between these two, from looking at their basic membership data to going to look at their billing data. Now, um, right here, you can see all the different um, transactions this person has made. This is going to keep track of everything that they've done chronologically. So you can see that we've got an invoice right here first that's been paid. We've got a payment right here, and you can see it was implied to invoice 690, which was this one here. That's how that got marked as paid. And then there's a new invoice right here that has not been paid uh, for $35, and you can see that the balance is still $35. Now, to quickly enter a payment for somebody, you can click right here. Um, it's going to, um, don't worry about this, this is just uh, an error because it's a demo page. But you can enter a payment for them right in here. This is a check or cash payment. And then you can also process a payment if you have any online payment gateway set up. So PayPal, Authorize.net, CyberSource, any of that stuff. You can click here to process the payment that way. So if they were to call you and say, hey, here's my credit card number, can you, can you do this? You know, uh, you'd be able to do it that way. You can also create more invoices for them. You can uh, create a statement for this person. Um, you can go back and edit their member info from this as well. And in addition, you can actually just renew this person. If you just want to renew this person, we can click here and right back. And you can see right here we've created a new invoice for this person for $10, and it added that onto their balance. So it's that easy just to do um, with one member's info. Now, creating mass invoices and everything like that, um, I suggest looking at the other video for that one. Uh, but we're going to look at a couple other things in here. So we're going to go back to the billing menu. One thing I wanted to point out, we looked at the member add-ons that the person could sign up for. Those ones are set up down here. Um, those have to do with non-dues invoice records, but really the thing that you want to look at for that is this little item list link right here. We click on this one. These are all the additional things that people can sign up for or that you can allow them to sign up for um, in new membership if you want to. So we click Add New Item here. We can call it whatever we want. Um, and a lot of times, most of the clients that, that use this um, use it to sell like subscriptions or something to that. So we're just going to call this one subscription service. And we're going to say that you know it's $25 a year. And if you want to offer it as a membership add-on, all you have to do is click that right there. And then you can choose how you want the field is. So you can allow people to choose uh, multiple, so they can sign up for multiple subscriptions if you want to. Or it would just be one. So it would just be a checkbox. Either they want it or they don't want it. And you can set it so it's recurring. Now, if we set things up like this, this will show up as an add-on that people can uh, sign up for when they join as a member and when they renew their membership. If you set recurring, it just means that it will recur with their membership um, automatically. They can choose to unsubscribe if they want to, but this just makes it easier for people if they automatically want it to be on there. All right. So that's those parts. That's the item list here. The one last thing I wanted to look at in the billing, I just wanted to point out these different reports. Um, all the reports are right up here. Um, the reason I'm gonna, I wanted to highlight these ones here is we're going to look at the reporting info or the reporting section next, but that only reports on membership data. It doesn't report on any kind of billing or payment data. So any billing, uh, any payment data, any reports like that that you want, you'll have to access right through here. They're pretty self-explanatory, and I cover these all, all in the other video as well. Um, so if you need any specifics on that, feel free to watch that one, or like I said, just ask me, uh, ask me what they do. I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so that's a brief look at the billing system. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the reporting, and that's the second box right down here. Now this ties in directly to all the membership info, which is why I wanted to highlight that today. Um, the first one right here is the reporting list and labels. We click on that one. These are a bunch of pre-made reports that you're able to run here um, with a little bit of variation. So the first thing you do is you would select the document type. So you can either just get a roster list, which will just show you all the members, um, and you can see how you want it. This is a uh, landscape detail. This one is detail, but it's double spaced. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this one does, um, but they all do sort of different things here. Um, you can even print them off as mailing labels or name badges. Um, you can also do an extract, which is great, uh, because that's a, basically a spreadsheet. So you can get a spreadsheet of all your member data if you want to. 
Uh, next after that, you would select a query or a grouping. So these are all very basic ones. So these are just uh, membership plans right here, so you can select from those. Um, or you can say, you know, I want to pull everybody who's going to receive the newsletter. Or I want to pull everybody who's on any of these lists right here. It only lets, lets you pick one from each of these. These are just very basic reporting. You could also choose to do members by category. So we were looking at setting up categories before. So I could pull up the you know, bills category and see everybody who had chosen that as a category. Or we could look at everybody in a specific project or committee. Basically, though, like I said, this is very basic reporting here. You pick one up here, one down here. Um, you can choose to exclude email recipients if you want to. And then you pick a sort order right here and then create the labels. So we're just going to create this one. It's going to pull nine records from that. And then we can get the extract or the text file right here. Now, if I had chosen something else, if I had chosen, you know, a roster list of detail right here and said create list, I will get the PDF of this one. Um, so these are just different things you can export right here. All right. Now, what I want to point out after that um, is the custom reports. This is the real, real meat of the, the reporting system and really probably what you'll use the most here. If I click on custom reports, first of all, it's going to show me all the reports that I've ever set up before. It saves every report that you set up, um, and you can run these at any time. So that's a great thing. Once you set up a report, you only have to set it up the one time, and then you can just run it whenever you want to. Uh, so we're going to add a new report here. Uh, first, we pick a name, so we're just going to call it Bill's Report again. Description this is Bill's Report. And then including quick reports. What this is, quick reports are reports that members can run. So um, people who are not admins can run these reports. So if you want to allow people to run these reports, go ahead and click that box. But if you want to keep them admin only, don't check that box. It will still save the report for you either way. It just will not make it um, available to your members if you leave it like this. So we'll say continue. Now, the next thing on the next page, I have to choose my member types that I want to include in this one. Now, I can include multiple ones in here. The way that this system works is on a, on a chain of ands. So everything that you pick here, it's going to basically put and in between it. So I want to look for everybody who is a member organization and a prospect and a list only and a past member. So it's going to look through all of these ones, basically add all these people to the list. The more, um, criteria, like the more criteria that you give it, the larger results that you'll usually get. And you know, so the more specific you get it, you'll get a smaller result set. Um, over here, we can either select all if we want to select all of them. We can clear them all. Or we can just choose the full member types. That's what I'm going to choose here. I'm going to leave off the prospects and the list onlys and stuff like that. We're just going to look at full member types here. The member status down here, by default, it's set to active members only, but you can look at drop members, active and dropped, pending members, or active and pending members. So we're just going to leave it as active for right now and say continue. Now, this next page here, this is, um, you'll see all these fields are very familiar from the member database. These are all different things that are in there. And then down at the bottom here, these are... These are the custom fields that we've set up right now. Um, these are custom fields for this organization. So each organization, when you set up your custom fields, you can do queries on them and look and see what's actually being, uh, what people are actually selecting in these ones. So everything is searchable. Everything is reportable on here. So, and like I said, this works on ants. So the more stuff that I select here, if I want to select, um, you know, suppress broadcast emails, if I want to select everyone that has that one checked, I'll say that's checked. And I want to look for prospects. And I want to look for the email address. Any of these ones here, we'll just keep looking for these more. So the more stuff you add in here, it's going to really refine your query down. So really, all I'm going to look for here, just to make it easy, I'm just going to look for everybody that has the board list checked. So we're just going to look for board members, basically. This will, that's what will get us here. So we're going to look for checked right here. We'll go down to the bottom and say continue. Now we get sort order fields. So we can choose how we want our results to be sorted. So we can have them sort by last name, and then by first name, and then by email. We don't have to pick any of these if we don't want to. It'll just sort it um, natively. Um, but if you want to do it, it will sort it by these three in this order here. All right, so we'll say continue to go past that. Now we get to our document type. This, this is the export. This is how it's going to be presented to us. A lot of these are familiar from the other pages, a bunch of roster lists, name badges, mailing labels, extract, things like that. The one that I want to point out, though, that I always use is a selective fields only table. The reason I like to use this one is not only does it um, put everything in an easy format for me, but it will um, allow me to choose exactly what data that I want exported from this report. And I'll explain what that means as we go to the next page here. Okay, so these are my HTML output fields. This only comes up if you select the HTML table, so just be aware of that. Um, these are the fields that I want to include, and so the, the ones that I highlight, these are going to be ones that are included on their report. So let's say that I want to have their first name and their last name, and I want to get their address, city, state, and zip code, 
And I should mention you can hold, you can select multiples by holding down the control button and clicking on these ones. And let's see, I want their board one checked too. I want to make sure that that's in there. So we're going to say board member and then board position and board rank, since that's essentially what we're pulling out of here. Output style down here is either standard or small print. And so we'll say continue now. So we've got all these fields set up. These are what I want to report on here. And we'll say continue. Now, this creates the table for me. You see it stretches over the page here. It's sometimes good to have the small print one. Um, but these are all the people who are board members. So those are all checked. Here's their positions, and here's their ranks. And you see here it only pulled in the fields that I asked it to. Uh, by default, the other ones will pull in either what they're pre-programmed to or everything. Um, so I really like this one because it lets you really refine down what you want. And in addition to that, you can get a CSV output of these people right here. So you can immediately get a spreadsheet with just these people and just these fields on it. Um, so it's really easy to construct stuff like that. And one final thing that I love about this report is you can send a broadcast message directly from here to just these people. So it will already know, if we click on that message, it will already know that you only want to send it to these people right here. And it will take you through the rest of the process, but it will pre-select those people for you. You can add additional people to that um, broadcast message if you want to, but this is just an easy way to get it started. All right. Now, if I go back into custom reports here, you'll be able to see that Bill's report is right here. And you can see that I've actually set up a couple of these ones. Um, so this is the one that we just did here. If I want to run that again, all I have to do is click on it and it automatically will pull it for me. This will update itself automatically, so if I was to go and remove you know, um, Owen Moore from the board list and add somebody else, the next time I ran this report, I wouldn't have to make any changes, I would just have to run it, and it would automatically replace him with whoever I had, I had put in his place, or if I didn't replace him anything, it would just remove him from the list. Uh, so just be aware of that, these are always dynamic, they're always gonna update for you. Uh, you only have to set them up one time, and then you can just run them whenever you want. The only exception to that would be if you're using dates and you want to see you know, um, people who did things between a certain date range or whatever, um, then you would have to go in and adjust the dates from time to time if you wanted to pull different dates. But that's the only exception to that. All right. Now that's most of what I wanted to cover today. I have a, a little bit of time left, so I'm going to go over some of the MMS configuration settings for the member database, um, just so that you guys are aware of all the options that you have here. Now the configuration box is down here on the bottom. And we're going to look at this one right here, MMS Configuration. What this does, um, this MMS Configuration area lets you change a whole bunch of options in the member database in the billing area, uh, right up here at the top, or basically module by module down here. Um, I've covered some of these in other trainings before, um, so if you'd like to watch the videos on those ones, I have covered these ones. But we're going to look at the top part right here right now for the member database. Now, custom fields and field labels. When I was talking before about, you know, you have the ability to create your own custom fields, whether they be text fields, selection fields, anything like that, that's where these are set up at. So if you click on here right now, this is going to show me the options that I have um, that I've already got set up and then the remaining fields that I can still use. So custom text fields, you can see right here, we've already got membership options set up as one, but I can add in as many of these as I want to from right here. Um, indicator fields, these are all checkboxes. We don't have any of those set up currently, but we could add them very easily. Custom selection fields, these are the drop downs. You can see we've got interdisciplinary team right here. And then field values, if I click on that, pull it up in another tab, these are all the values that are set up for that drop down. And you can add or remove as many of these as you want to. Down below that, we've got multi selection fields. These are basically arrays of checkboxes. So these are ones where you can check multiple checkboxes to do certain things. So, like, you know, um, it would be like a select, all, select any of these that apply, and then would have the list down below that. So you would say, you know, um, Right here it would be select those that apply. And then you could change the field values right here in the same exact way. You would just create them right there. All right, so back to here. Multi-line text fields. These are bigger text areas that you can get. Uh, these are good for like um, sentences that you want people to respond in. So if you want more than just a, a couple of words, you want sentences from people, um, you would set these ones up right here. So these are good for profile or notes or things like that. Now, down below these ones, you see they change a little. We've got custom admin text fields. The main difference between these ones and then the ones above them, all the ones above here are, you can set these up, and the users can define their own information to put into these. They can change their information, and then they can pick new things, um, any of that. They have control over those ones. Admin fields, though, down below here, these are ones that are set up that only admins can enter and change the information in. So only admins are going to be able to change anything that's entered into here. Let's see if we have some of these set up. Yes, we do have a few of these set up. Um, we've got indicators for, um, you know, for president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, um, and then rank and stuff up here. So all of these ones are custom fields that are set up that only admins can change. Users cannot change these themselves. 
So again, we've got multi-line. We even have uh, some date fields here. So if you want to keep some extra date fields, um, so you know, like when did you hear about the organization, stuff like that, you can put those in there, and those will um, format the dates. Additionally, you've got phone fields here. Um, right now, this one is mobile, but you can enter something else in here if you want to. So we can say, uh, you know, if I don't want to call this mobile phone, I can call this cell phone instead. That's how it will show up in there. So that's how you change the label on that one. Additionally, we've got phone one and phone two. You can change these to whatever you want. So if you don't want that to be called phone one, we can call this, you know, alternates. Oops. Alternate phone. And that's how it will show up in the database. Same thing with any of these alternate field labels. These are what are normally called by default in the database, but you can change them to anything by changing them over here. Like I was saying about categories, we can change categories right there to something else. For example, I, I had an art organization one time that I changed it to medium for. So they had different mediums that they used that for. So people could select multiple mediums that they worked in, and they wanted it to be called that. So that's where it was changed at. Uh, so any of these here you can change uh, the field labels for. All right, so we're going back here. Um, we're going to look at the general configuration real quickly. It's going to seem like a huge, complicated mess of links here, um, but there's a whole lot of really powerful stuff you can do in here. Um, if you're ever curious, I should say this too about the configuration area. If you're ever curious about any what any of these do, uh, please feel free to submit a ticket or ask us. Um, we're we're happy to let you know what these do, um, and you know, and we want you to use the MMS to the, to the uh, best of its ability. So these will definitely let you do that and give you extra options for things that you can do. A lot of stuff in here has to do with uh, defaults for the organization. So your organization name, um, a weather code if you want, your zip code. Um, you can even have default names uh, for stuff in here that you want to set up as defaults when people sign up for things. Uh, your domain. These are all different emails that you can set up that get contacted for things. So change notify is you know, when a member updates their info, it's going to send a message to that. Member inquiry is if you know, there's a sign up for um, email notifications thing that will go to this one. So these are all different email addresses that can get contacted from here. Um, these are categories. Um, right here, and you can require things, you can set up additional ones, you can set up super categories, which allow you to do uh, basically categories of categories, basically. Um, you can use images in the categories right here, so that's possible right here. Um, a lot of these ones right down here, these are if you want to enable certain things. So if you want to turn on, you know, the member number, allow people to turn on or upload photos, um, let people put in their individual websites, anything like that. These are just additional things that you can enable in here. Um, let's see. Member specific permissions. This is what I set up before to allow people to partial admin permissions. So that's an important one. If you need to have those turned on, that's where it's turned on at. Uh, let's see what else we get down here. We can set the currency. Uh, most people are just set to US dollar, but if you use a different currency, you can change that to something here. Your organization address and phone number go right here. Um, let's see. These are just a lot of different preferences you can set up. So if you want to allow people to put on add-ons, so that's what we were looking at that before. Um, or if you wanted to do member plan categories. We didn't really look at that one before, but you can group member plans into different categories if you want to, if that's enabled. That's definitely an option. Um, and then these ones, too, you can see if uh, you want these to default to checked. So if you want to offer people the newsletter, um, you can default that to checked right there, and that when they sign up, it will be checked for them. Same thing with the email newsletter and the email list and any of that stuff. Um, let's see. A lot of these other ones down here are stuff for um, individual members. So you can ask them if they want to, you can prompt them if they want to exclude themselves from lists or something like that. Um, you can also say that you, know, you don't want them to publish the emails or you don't want to publish emails in reports or directories or anything like that. Um, these are just a lot of different things that you can offer to your members uh, that will allow them to opt in and out of different kinds of things. Let's see here. We do have some verbiage on here as well. So um, we have password reset pages, member login pages, and member directory uh, pages right here. You can click here to edit the verbiage on any of these ones. So, so if you don't like the default wording on any of those, you can come in here and change the verbiage right there very easily. Um, let's see. That's the most of what's down here. Let's see here. Yeah, that's pretty much um, th the really important stuff in there that I wanted to point out. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that I wanted to look at. Ah, finally, the last thing to look at here. Um, this is a really good one to see if you can't, or to look at who's getting what emails in your organization. This config email address is right here, this option right under reports. If you click on this one, this shows you um, the type of email and then who it's currently going to right now. So right now, all the organizational emails are going directly to me. All the help emails are going to my boss. All the inquiry emails are also going to my boss. So you can 
quickly look over here to see who is getting what email. Um, and if you want, if you need to change any of these, you're not sure where they are, please ask us. Um, it's not easy to find. Some of these are kind of buried in some of the other options, and you know we know where to find them pretty quickly, um, so we don't mind changing that at all for you if you need to need those to be updated. All right, I think that was pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in terms of membership tools today. Um, I was recording the session, so again, I apologize for the terrible audio. It should be good on the recording, and I'll send it out to everyone um, once everything is processed and I answer the rest of the questions um, from the session. Uh, the next session we're going to be having is in two weeks on the 28th. Uh, during that one, we're going to cover communication tools. Um, and the communication tools basically refer down to uh, kind of this area. So we're going to cover mul uh, broadcast messages, multi-post, uh, the newsletter editor, all sorts of things like that that you can use to communicate with your members. Um, all right, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And I will send out an email shortly um, with the video and with all the questions that you guys had. Thank you very much. Have a good day.